Welcome to battle number one of week number nine of the FNF Victory Road Draft League Season 3. This battle is going to be pitting Noelle's team, which is Hypno Slumber Party, versus Pharaoh's team, which is Prism Armory Reforged. The Mega Pokemon in this battle, there are actually no Mega Pokemon in this battle. And then Z any Ente, Z Attack, Flygon on Hypno Slumber Party, and there are no Z Pokemon on Pharaoh's team. So, um, I am Noel, in case you didn't know, and I already did this battle, so I'm going to be commentating this, and it is a replay. Um, the the Pokemon that I was surprised to see on Pharaoh's team were Malamar and Golisopod. I didn't think I'd see them. I, I had already faced Golisopod earlier, and um, Celesteela was pretty good against it, but I wasn't expecting it to come, so I think that it was overall a decently strong choice versus my team. And Malamar, I was just scared of it, like, racking up superpowers because my team didn't really have a way to stop it. Like, I didn't bring Clefable because I just didn't... I, I don't know, I just didn't feel like bringing it. So... So yeah, I didn't have an unaware Pokemon to stop that. But yeah, this was this was definitely poised to be an interesting battle. Bulky Pokemon on both sides. Um, and... A lot of my team building personally went to making sure that Kartana didn't get any momentum because I, I had a feeling that Kartana was coming, so I was just like, I need to make sure Kartana can't sweep. So <laughs> that's how I kind of approach this. Um, so let's take a look at this battle and see how it goes. So we begin with Pajamas the Scrafty versus Cardboard the Golisopod. <laughs> An interesting name for Golisopod. I'm actually wondering why it's named Cardboard. I'm going to have to ask Pharaoh about that. But Cardboard goes for the first impression. The knockoff is going to remove an eject button. And both of these Pokemon around 69 and 70%. Chamomile the Vileplume comes in. And that Leech's Life is going to bring Chamomile down to 76%. Cardboard is... Um, intimidated but photomancer comes in and that sleep powder is going to miss against photomancer the necrozma i really wanted to get the necrozma switch in asleep but uh serenity the blissey comes in and that photon geyser hits it's only going to do 20 percent to blissey though who is very comfortable taking these special attacks and blissey restores some hp for, with leftovers Goromaki the kartana comes in a nice opportunity for kartana to try and set up a sweep um and snuggles the entei is going to come in taking that wish from Blissey, the Brick Break is going to do decent damage, but that Wish allows Snuggles to go fully back to 100%. Delirium, the Toxpex, comes in, taking that Sacred Fire. The Sacred Fire does 18%. It's not going to burn, and Delirium does have Black Sludge, so it does have some longevity in this case. And Sunny Day goes up from Snuggles the Entei, weakening the power of Liquidation. It's still going to lower defense as Snuggles is at 68%. Um, Pharaoh does have a history of running offensive Toxapex, which is a very interesting choice. Um, and Chamomile comes in boosted by that sun with chlorophyll and there's that leech seed on delirium delirium at 100 percent still pretty comfortable the payback's gonna do 20 percent so chamomile does take some damage but chamomile is pretty comfortable right now still at 67 percent um the sleep powder is not going to hit delirium so another time where sleep powder does not work because of that baneful bunker and in comes kartana Godomaki. The final sun, turn of sun is up, and Sleep Powder is not going to work on Goromaki. So that Psycho Cut hits, but it's only going to do 23% thanks to the Payapa Berry that weakens it. And the Hidden Power of Fire hits Goromaki, but it's going to hang on because of the Focus Sash. So both of those items saving these Pokemon in these scenarios. Psycho Cut not doing much against Kaguya, the Celesteela who restores HP to 98% because of those leftovers. Brick Break also not doing that much, just 22% as Godomaki is taken down by the Earthquake on uh, from Kaguya, and that Beast Boost is going to raise Kaguya's defense, putting Kaguya in a very, very uh, comfortable situation in this match. In comes Photomancer at 100%, and Kaguya goes for the Protect to scout out the move. That Photon Geyser is going to be protected against, and Kaguya now at 88%. So another Photon Geyser is going to hit, doing 22% to Kaguya. It is resisted, and there's that Leech Seed on Photomancer, allowing Kaguya to restore HP to 84%. Delirium, the Toxpex, comes in at 82%, and both of these defensive Titans um, against each other, but Kaguya does have access to Earthquake, as we've seen earlier, so Delirium will have to be careful of that, and also Leech Seed. Another thing to note is that Delirium 
does not have regenerator as it has not restored HP coming back inside to the battle. Um, so this is a merciless Toxapex and that makes sense because of the fact that Pharaoh is running Baneful Bunker on Delirium. So the goal of this set for Pharaoh is to get hit by one of those physical attacks, get the Baneful Bunker to poison and then do big damage on the poisoned opponent with Merciless. So that Leech Seed and that Earthquake is going to bring Delirium to around half of its HP. Delirium still going for the Liquidation, maybe trying to remove that defense boost with the chance of Liquidation to lower defense. So Delirium switches out into Overturner, the Malamar, and that Earthquake only going to do about 26% to Malamar. And Malamar goes for the switcheroo. That's going to give Choice Scarf to Kaguya and give leftovers to Overturn of the Malamar, who is now Leech Seeded. Um, Malamar in a lot more comfortable of a position, and Kaguya is forced to continue using Leech Seed in this scenario. So Kaguya now no longer has a defense boost and is switching out. That first impression hits Lullaby the switch in really hard as Cardboard is hit by the U-turn. Still at 65%, so it won't be forced out, and Pajamas the Scrafty comes in at 70%. Uh, Celestila comes back in, Kaguya, we do know it is Choice Scarfed, and that Razor Shell is only going to do 83%, but it does lower the defense of Kaguya, and Leech Seed is also going to miss against Cardboard, and Cardboard goes for another Razor Shell now with no Intimidate effectively, it does a little bit more. Chamomile comes in to take that Razor Shell, it only does 11% to Chamomile, and Chamomile now a lot more comfortable going for the Sleep Powder on Cardboard. Because Chamomile outspeeds Cardboard, I did pick up on the fact that this Goliath was not speed invested. So the Giga Drain hits Delirium decently hard, doing 23%. Delirium now at 29, but it can stall out turns with that Black Sludge. With Baneful Bunker, that's exactly what it does. The Leech Seed not going to hit because of that Baneful Bunker, and Chamomile now at 54%, Delirium at 35. Giga Drain is going to bring Delirium down to 13% as Delirium goes for that Payback doing 18 to Chamomile. And Delirium does have some leverage in this situation with Baneful Bunker stalling out time versus Chamomile, and it's still not seated, so it's not going to override those uh, that Black Sludge recovery. In comes Photomancer, the Necrozma, and Leech Seed misses again. <laughs> Vileplume just has missed a lot in this battle, especially versus Necrozma, so it is forced out into Serenity the Blissey. So Photomancer going for that Photon Geyser again. Blissey taking that like a champ. It does have that special defense. It's not scared of a uh, special attacking uh, set on Necrozma. And the Toxic is going to hit that Overturner switch in. Now nullifying that Leftovers. And Serenity going for the Protect. Scouting out the move that Overturner decides to go for. It's a superpower. And that is not something that Serenity wants to be hit for hit by at all. So Serenity choosing to switch out instead into Kaguya the Celesteela. We have seen this matchup before. The superpower is going to hit Kaguya doing 19%, but because of that boost, Kaguya is in trouble because the next hit will deal a lot more damage. But it's a Psycho Cut actually uh, trying to call out that switch in into Chamomile the Vile Plume, but no switch in happening here. Kaguya at 33% overturn and Toxic and Leech Seeded now. And now Chamomile the Vile Plume comes out to take the superpower. And that's only going to do 19% to Chamomile as Overturner gets that attack boost and defense boost again. But with that Leech Seed and the Toxic damage, it's not going to be enough. And Overturner does go down. Next Pokemon to come in is Cardboard the Glycopod. Score is 6-4, and Cardboard does get Leech Seeded. That Leech Seed is not going to bring it down to below half HP and Chamomile at 50, but the Giga Drain will, and that is going to bring Cardboard to 25%, activating its emergency exit, and in comes Photomancer, the Necrozma. Chamomile, not going to want to stick around again. We see Photomancer coming in to force Vileplume out a lot. Pajamas of Scrafty comes in this time instead of Blissey, and the Photon Geyser is not going to hit Pajamas because of that immunity to Psychic type attacks. Now the Flash Cannon hits instead, doing 17%, and the Knockoff is going to remove Photomancer's leftovers. So it does not have passive recovery. Delirium the Toxpex comes in, and Serenity the Blissey comes in. So Serenity, not going to be able to do much to Delirium in this circumstance, so just taking advantage of Delirium's passivity instead to pass wishes to other members of the team that might be vital in the long run. 
and so Scrafty, Pajamas and Scrafty comes in lowering Delirium's attack and also taking that wish from Blissey. The Poison Jab isn't going to uh, poison Pajamas, so po Pajamas is now at 100% and Blissey comes back in. So that Poison Jab, uh, also not going to poison Serenity to Blissey as Delirium is at 50% now, so the, the, the Black Sludge is allowing Delirium to recover quite nicely. Um, it's like it doesn't even need Regenerator because it's recovering so much from that Black Sludge. And in comes Kaguya at 33%. There's that Liquidation. It's going to bring Kaguya down to 20%, lowering its defense. But the Wish is going to bring Kaguya all the way back to 100% as well. So Blissey just doing a lot of healing right now as Mary comes in, getting that Leech Seed from Kaguya. So Mary is a Silvely Ground. Pajamas comes in taking advantage of that leech seed and also uh, intimidating Mary. So the score is 6-4. Toxapex, Delirium comes in and the power-up punch is going to hit critically, not doing much damage but allowing Pajamas to get that attack boost. Delirium now at 57% and there's that Baneful Bunker. It's going to allow Pajamas uh, not to hit Delirium and also poison Pajamas. So now Delirium at 64%. So Mary comes in and Pajamas goes for the knockoff. That is 49% to Mary. Pajamas now at 76% and poisoned, taking that crunch pretty easily. And there's the drain punch on Mary. It's going to take it down, bringing Pajamas back up to 84%. Score is now 6-3 as Pajamas is at 72% with an attack boost, but also poisoned. So Serenity the Blissey comes in and there's the poison jab from Delirium. Still not going to poison Serenity, and Serenity now sitting at at 54%. There's a wish going up, and the poison jab hits Serenity. Still not poisoning. Serenity now at 36%. And instead of passing the wish this time, Serenity decides to take the wish on itself. So that wish combined with leftovers recovery is going to allow Serenity to go up to 92%. Delirium still recovering with that Black Sludge at 82% now and that Poison Jab hits Serenity. This time it does poison Serenity. And Serenity now sitting at 60% with that poison. And Delirium is going to end up restoring all of its HP because of Blissey's passivity and the fact that it's not really doing much to Delirium. Delirium is still trying to pressure, pressure Blissey with these um, attacking uh, moves, but Serenity is able to overcome this and is sitting at 90% now. The Wish goes up and there's that liquidation bringing Serenity down to 64, 70 after leftovers. We're probably going to see this Wish being passed to a different Pokemon. Indeed, Pajamas of Scrafty comes in. And the Payback not going to do much to, Delir uh, to Pajamas, who also has intimidated Delirium. In comes Celestila. The Baneful Bunker is not going to work. So Celestila basically has been relegated to the role of just leech seeding everything because it has a choice scarf attached, so it can't do much else other than leech seed. Cardboard now coming out at 13%, and Pajamas of Scrafty comes in. So instead of going for the first impression of Razor Shell, Cardboard actually goes for the Leech Life to restore some HP to counteract that Leech Seed, and Delirium the Toxpex comes in. There's the Power Up Punch from Pajamas, and we've seen this situation before. It's likely that Delirium is going to go for the Baneful Bunker. Pajamas does have an attack boost, but yeah, there's that Baneful Bunker, and because Pajamas seems to be only attacking no status moves, it's going to get poisoned yet again by Delirium. Delirium now at 100%. Pajamas at 73% and there's a knockoff removing the Black Sludge so Delirium has no passive recovery this time around. The Liquidation critical hit because of Merciless combined with the Poison brings Pajamas down to 22%. Kaguya the Celesteela comes in to take the Poison Jab. And another Baneful Bunker from Delirium. We've seen this move used a lot. Yeah, there's only 5 Baneful Bunkers left 11 times. So in comes Necrozma to take the Earthquake. It's going to do 19% to Photomancer. One more Earthquake brings it down to 5%, but it does have access to Moonlight. There's the Moonlight. Photomancer now sitting at a comfortable 55% as Blissey comes in. Blissey um, able to take moves from Photomancer pretty easily. Now at 76%. 
the flash cannon is not going to do much. And Blissey goes for the heal bell. That's going to heal Scrafty from that poison. And another flash cannon brings Serenity down to 60%. There's the Toxic on Photomancer. And Photomancer's opting to stay in for the flash cannon, maybe fishing for some of those special defense drops. There's a wish going up from Serenity the Blissey. And in comes Golisopod, Cardboard, to face Pajamas the Scrafty. That Intimidate is going to nerf Cardboard's attack, and Pajamas comes in, healing to Fool. Yeah, again, that Thunder Punch takes out Cardboard, and the score is now 6-2. Pajamas the Scrafty does look pretty comfortable right now. Photomancer comes in, going for the Earth Power. That's going to do 20% to Pajamas, who goes for the Power Up Punch. Another critical hit on the Power Punch. Still not doing much damage, but the point of that to raise Pajamas' attack as Photomancer goes for the Moonlight. And Pajamas goes for the knockoff. That's going to do about 50% to Photomancer combined with the Toxic. Photomancer is not going to be able to take another one of those. So Delirium comes in and there's a knockoff again. Taking out Delirium. Score is now 6-1 with Necrozma being the last Pokemon standing. Flash Cannon not going to do too much to Pajamas who retaliates with the knockoff. And that is the match. It's a 6-0 victory for Hypno Slumber Party, which is Noel's team over Pharaoh's team, Prism Armory Reforged. And um, yeah, it looks like Scrafty was really, really um, important in this matchup. Once Goromaki, the Kartana, went down, Scrafty didn't have too much opposition that could take it on. Um, this was an Assault Vest Scrafty, just, um, just with uh, Intimidate. So the combination of the strong defense from Intimidate and the good special defense uh, was really hard to take down, especially with Blissey passing a bunch of wishes. So really interesting match, really, match really well played. Um, I really like seeing Pharaoh's strategies, especially with Toxapex and Merciless, which is really interesting to see. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you for tuning in. We have more Week 9 matches coming up. Stay tuned for those, and until then, I'll see you then.